All right, here we are at the last one of these. We're finally on our text effects stuff. I'll show you how to do a couple cool things. And I recommend you sticking through the whole video on this one if you're already here, because towards the end, you can kind of see my process of how I just kind of on the fly make a new effect. And if you watch that, that way you'll kind of be set up to figure out how to do your own, let your creativity breathe. But yeah, let's get started. Okay, first text effect we're gonna do, and probably the most common one you would wanna do, is colored text. First, let's open up our draw. Let's go down to where we're drawing our individual characters or our text. We can go ahead and change this function to draw text color. And now there are four variables down here, each for color. Each one is basically a corner and then it will diffuse throughout the rest of the text, which in our case is just one character at a time. I would imagine normally you would just be doing one solid color, but whatever, man, we're gonna do all four. So that means we now need some color variables. Let's go into our text box functions and our defaults. And let's add in this middle space here. Now we're gonna start adding effects that work on individual characters. So we need to set a bunch of default values. We're gonna to need to do another loop here and we'll say variables for every letter slash character. Let's do another loop. Okay, just like before I did var C. I did C is less than 500 because we don't necessarily know how many characters are in our page yet. So you can just set this to a high number that you'll never go over. Honestly, like 200 is probably fine. But basically you don't wanna to get to a point where your text box is typing out and then it's trying to look for a variable that you haven't set yet. So if you have like super small text and really long text boxes, this number might need to be pretty high. I, I seriously doubt you'll need to set it higher than this. But anyways, so now we have color variables. So let's make color underscore one. And it's gonna be a two dimensional array because we'll need information for that specific character here. And then the page, so the page number here. And we'll set the defaults to white or whatever default color you want your text to be. So we do color two, color three, color four. Easy, now those are set up. So now I can put those up here. So color one of our character of our current page. And then we'll have color two, three, four. Let's rename these properly. And then we'll put an alpha. I'm not doing anything with it. You can if you want to. So that's good. Now we wanna make a function to where we can actually change this. Kinda of like how the character and stuff works over here. And here's how I like to do it. So I'm gonna put these above text as well and do a big comment out and say text VFX. So let's make a function and I'm gonna call it script text color, open that up. And I like to do this with six different arguments. So first parameter, we're gonna say the first character that we want to be colored. And then we wanna go up to the last character. So we're defining a space where all the characters in between there should be colored the way that we're setting this. And then the four color parameters. And whenever you're setting parameters up like this, make sure you put underscores, because if I were to just put first character like that, then only first shows up. Just a little tip. So you name these whatever you want. I'll name it underscore start, underscore end, and then color one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna set up yet another for loop, but a little bit differently. So we'll say var c, and we're gonna start it at the start, not at zero. Then we're gonna say as long as c is less than or equal to our end, then we can add to c. We're gonna tab this out. Then we'll say like color one, at this, at this character we're looping through. And then at this page number, and we're gonna say this page number minus one equals call one. The reason we do that is because I like to put these under the lines of text that I want them to edit. So let me fill the rest of these out really quick and I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna say color two equals that argument, color three equals uh, that argument, and color four equals that argument, okay. So let's go into our game text and we will color the words blue kid blue. So what I like to do is when I'm under the line that I wanna edit with these effects, I tab out under it and then I tab out like this. So I say script text color. Now I need to find the first character I wanna to go to up to the last one. And the way I count it is this. I'll start it at the first one and then I'll just Go over with the arrow keys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I want to start on nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and I want to end on 16. So first character is nine, last character is 16, and then I choose what colors I want. And I'll just use the built in C underscore blue, and I'll just use that for all of them at first. 
And so now you see, if we go into text color, the reason I'm doing page number minus one is because I'm applying this to the previous page. This script text here, over here, already added one to the page number once it was over. So we are now editing the last page. And it just makes the most sense to me to put it under. So that's how I do all these. So in our text color, it loops through all the characters. It finds all the ones in between the two parameters I set and it sets all of their colors to my arguments, which would be blue. So, oh yeah, I, I counted that wrong. So it's, so it's counting from where the left goes. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because nine is on the other side of the B. So I'm gonna say eight. It's been a minute since I've used the color text. So I kind of forget how I count them sometimes. But once you're like there one night, like sitting down, like writing a bunch of stuff in the script and you're just doing it through here, you can fire them off super fast. So we can test this again, but let's test it with some weird stuff. So we'll say one of the corners are gonna be aqua. We'll say one is just white and then one is yellow. It's probably gonna look like garbage. Yeah, it looks pretty weird. But you see, each individual thing has its own colors. So you could do something like this, make it look like sh shining gold or something. And uh, the order here is top left color, top right color, bottom right color, bottom left color, I believe. You can test that out. And you can do this any amount of times you want in the same line, doesn't matter. So let's, I'm gonna say excited will be red. So that was 28 to 35 and we'll say it's red. Yeah, that's it's freaking epic. Okay, so we got those down. Uh, you can also look up ways to make your own colors in code. You're not just limited to these built-in ones with Game Maker. You can mix colors, blend them. You can get the uh, hex values or whatever. So just look up how to do that stuff. And you can use whatever color you want. Because uh, honestly, a lot of these built-in ones are very extreme and ugly. Okay, so now let's do, let's do something slightly more involved. And we'll do like a wavy effect. So I'm back in my defaults, in my every letter slash character section. And to make some floating text, first let's make a variable called float text that for C page number, we will set that to zero or false. This is basically for should this letter be floating or not. And then we'll do one called float dir for float direction. And the way that we're gonna set this is we're gonna be using the D sign function, which can help us return a value between one and negative one based on a 360 degree direction, based on a graph, where it's basically returning a Y value on a graph of where that Y value would be if the point was traveling along the circumference of a circle at that degree. So for example, 90 degrees would be positive one, 180 would be back down to zero, 270 would be down to negative one, and then 360 or zero degrees would be zero again. And this is a really good way to do little floating effects. So if we want our text to float, we could have it all float at once. Like maybe if a ghost was saying the lines, you might want all of the letters to sort of uniformly float up and down or something like that. But the kind of the kind of kooky, crazy, silly, fun way to do it is to have them be a little offset so it makes a little wave. So to offset them, when we're initializing this variable, we don't want them all to be at zero degrees. We want them all to be at different places around 360 degrees. So we will set this to our C value times 20. So for 20 degrees. So the first letter will start at zero. The second one will start at 20 degrees, third 40, fourth 60, so on and so forth. And that'll just make sure it's returning different values, but they're all very close. They're all only 20 degrees away from each other. So that'll help create a wavy effect. And let's go do that right now. So going back to our text box, back in our draw event, we're in the draw the text part and we'll add a space up here. And I'll just call this space special stuff like that because you could do any number of things similar to this in this little area here. So this one will be floating text or wavy text, whatever you want to call it. Wavy text might be more appropriate. I don't know. So we'll set a var underscore and I'll call it float y. Set that equal to zero. And we can come down here into our y value for our letter and we can go ahead and add our float y to that because we're gonna be manipulating it in between here based on whether or not that individual character is supposed to be floating or not. And if we don't do anything with it, it's just zero, so it stays exactly the same. So we'll do that first check. So we'll say if float text of this character on this page 
is equal to true or equal to one, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Zero and one, true and false, doesn't, you know, whatever. If that is true, then one, we want to start adding to our float direction. I seem to have misspelled something uh, again. It's not floor dir, you little sillies. It's float dir, okay? Be more vigilant next time, thanks. I'm just kidding you guys, I'm just giving you a hard time. Anyways, if this is true, then that means we need to add to our float dir of that character on this page. And I say we need to add to it, we need to add something to it, a certain value, because we want to move all the way around that 360 degrees. So we can say plus equals any number, and I actually pick negative six. So you could say minus equals six. Depending on your text size, all that stuff, whatever, this will be a little bit different. A good floating amount is anywhere between this number being between maybe like four and eight. Uh, otherwise it can be really slow or it can get super fast really quickly. Um, and negative or positive doesn't matter. It basically just means it'll be going in the opposite direction. So whenever we test it, I'll show you what that means, but it, it, it's almost functionally identical. So anyways, we need to do that. And so now we need to set our float Y to the D sign of this value here. Like I said, this returns between a positive and negative one based on the 360 degrees here. I say 360, it can be below 360 or above it. It's just taking this number as if it were a degree on a circle. Then yeah, and depending on how much you want it to float, you can just multiply this times whatever number you want. I think just one is fine, so you don't actually have to do this because this already returns between one and negative one. Um, but if you want it to float a lot, you could say two or three. This is another one of those things where the higher this number gets in little increments, the more ridiculous and faster it gets. So you can play around with that however you want. So cool, cool. Programming wise, this is all done. Let's go back into our text box functions and make a similar one to our script text color. So I'm gonna say function script text float. I'm gonna do the same thing here where the first two is just the start and end. And that's actually all I'm gonna do because I don't need an argument to set it to true or false because the only reason I would even write script text float is if I wanted it to be true. And I don't have any other parameters for it, but you could, if you wanted to, make parameters for this. You can make this its own array with this information here to pair up with it every time. You could also make this its own variable, the distance that it floats up and down. So you could do whatever you want at this point. You just gotta get a little creative with it and, got, and you need to get a little brave. But so let's just say start and end. And we can just do the, we can just grab this here because we got a loop again through all those characters. But we only need to set one thing and that is say float text of the C of our page number minus one. And we'll just set that equal to true. So let's try that out. Back in the script game text. So I'm gonna get rid of these and just say script text float. And we'll say the whole I'm blue kid will be it. So four to one, two, three. So four to 17. So we can include that little exclamation point there. So now all we gotta do is put four to 17. And let's see how that does. And would you look at that? I'm pretty happy about that. And that negative six makes sure that the wave kind of goes to the right. If it was just positive six, the wave goes to the left. And I kind of like the way, actually I kind of like both. It really doesn't matter. So I can make that two and I can make this like eight, make that go faster. So yeah, look at that. I was really going for it. And then if you wanted the wave to be like a little bit more ridiculous, faster in general, or the waves itself to be smaller, you would want to distance these numbers out more. So if I made it 40 instead of 20, see now the waves are smaller, so they look like they're going faster. Yeah, just tweak it however you want to. Let's try one more. Let's try one for a little shaky, scaredy cat text. So same thing here. This is just going to be a true or false, whether or not it should be shaking. I mean, I'm just doing this one on the fly, but let's also make this shake dir as well. See, page number. And let's set each one of these to a random place amongst the 360 degrees. So I random 360 just returns a whole number from 360 down to zero. And then maybe one more, we'll say shake timer. And maybe that's like I random out of four because we might only want it to shake every couple frames. So maybe every four frames. So again, we, we want to randomize this. It needs to look chaotic. Let's go back to our text box. 
So here we'll say shake text. We'll want to make shake vars. So shake x equals zero, shake y equals zero. Do what we did here. We'll go ahead and add them to our x and y values. That's pretty important if you wanted to actually do something. So added our shake x, shake y, and we'll do a similar check if shake text of our current character of our current page is equal to true. And we'll say shake timer here minus minus, we'll subtract, and we'll say if it's lower than or equal to zero, so less than or equal to zero, first thing we'll do is we'll reset the shake timer to some kind of random number. So we can say I random range, we'll say maybe between four and eight. I don't know, this is me just guessing that this might look okay, because we want to set it back above zero so it can count down again, but at, at non-consistent increments, so it looks crazy. Then we'll set our shake direction of that character in that page to a random place in 360 degrees. And now that we have this, we can recalculate these with these functions. So these are the length dir functions. So length direction x, you put in a distance or a length, I'll just say one pixel, and then you put in a direction, so our shake direction of our C and page. We'll do the same thing with the Y, and that's for length dir Y as well. If you do these together, it calculates the true distance, this true distance from, from coordinate zero, zero, facing whatever direction you put in here. These are pretty useful, these are pretty cool. Read up on these if you don't know about them. So now I'm gonna make another little function here. Text shake, change that to shake text. So now I have a whole new function that does a different thing. I'm gonna try to shake this text instead. And I have a feeling it's not gonna look good, but it's gonna look different. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. It would probably look better if they kind of snapped back. Or maybe if they only freaked out for one little frame. So I might only set these two variables on that single frame where the new direction is found. So for one frame, it'll snap into position and then it'll snap back. And let's, let's see if that's kind of cool. <laughs> it's a little fast. Maybe if I only do it for the last two frames? Okay, yeah, that's kind of cool. I did it a little differently in my game, I think, a long time ago. Could definitely use some tweaking, but you know. Congratulations on getting to the end. This was a very long and tiring series to record and edit. So I very much appreciate you getting to the end. But yeah, have fun playing around with this. Have fun making some stories and your games and all that. Before I go, I'll do the one more. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming out with a game pretty soon. A smaller project just uh, so I can actually make some money to survive on. That'd be pretty cool. So yeah, just look out for that. It'll probably be called like the Starcross Starcade Special. That's what I've been calling it. It'll probably be named something slightly different. It's like an action arcade game. And the idea is like this is an arcade game that exists in Rose of Starcross. My big game, my big boy project. So yeah, please check those out. It would be very cool of you. Also, kind of let me know what your ideas would be for like more videos you'd want me to make. I definitely want to make more, but I'm not entirely sure exactly what I want to do next. I definitely don't want to do something so involved as this. So yeah, just, just let me know your suggestions if you have any. Let me know I'm here. Let me know on the Discord, on my Twitter, something like that. Who knows? What? A, you know? Yeah, okay. So uh, that's the end. Uh, subscribe and bye-bye.